Gathered friends, welcome back to Bionicle and Jesse Heck Creative. Today we're going over the Mask Maker Akimu, Mask Maker Makuta, and the Skull Grinder Combiner, Kulta Kai. Before we begin, make sure to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button. Now let's get to it. So here's Akimu the Mask Maker. The Mask of Creation looks so beautiful. I love this mask a lot. It is a far cry from the masks used for the protectors. It's really nicely done. It has a lot of cool runes on it and is amazing. He has another mask that looks basically like this, but with gold on the bottom. I can't find that, so just imagine it, I guess. But this mask, really, when you put it on him, you never want to take it off. It's just really great. He has these really cool shoulder pauldrons that look wonderful and has some nice Okoto armor on himself with the chest over here. We also have some four armors over here that I did and kind of reworked him a little bit to make him a little better, I would think, and look a little more in line with his TV interpretation. I think they changed it a little bit. There's a lot of gears for the function we'll go over a little bit later. His feet look really nice. They're silver. I wish they were gold and his hands are silver. I wish they were gold too, but it does kind of break it up a little bit to make it look better. Akimu looks wonderful, especially that mask. I'm glad they bulked him up and gave him a gear function. Akimu the Mask Maker comes with a hammer. It's a really nice little hammer here. It's kind of cute in a way. It's very well done. We have the shooting piece on one side and two barrel pieces on the other side that look good and similar and make it look like a hammer. For the function, you can rotate and shoot off the little parts. They're fine. I guess they look pretty cool. They're easier to put back on the little stud pieces. They're very neat and they work well with this piece and the character. It's very nice. People do say that the red pins kind of mess it up, but I'm, I'm fine with it. I don't care. I just like set accuracy. That's all. By twisting a gear on Akimu's back, you could have him swing his hammer. It is really sort of tough to swing. He has three different gears right over here. You could put on him or you could put on less for a little bit easier time of swinging, but it's fine by me. It's a little tougher than some Toa, but it's pretty okay, I guess. It works well. In addition to his hammer, he comes with a shield that you can spin, kind of. It's pretty interesting. There's also a gear in the back that can make that spinning function a little bit better and faster. You may have to push it together to get it to kind of spin better if you want. I do love this piece. I think it was used for a carriage or something, and it works well for a shield. It's really nice and gold and really accentuates the character a lot. And like most Generation 2 characters, you can also get the mask off by pressing on the stock right here. It doesn't fall off as well as it possibly could, but it's easy to put back on and try again. There we go. As far as articulation goes for Akimo, the head can move around left and right, up a little bit, down a little bit, not too much, out with the arm, down. And then you can also spin it with this. It does swivel though on the axis and swivels much better on this one right over here, if a little bit clicky. We also have an elbow going up this far. I can swivel left and right and go down all the way. You can have a swivel and then up and down with the wrist and then in and out. There is no torso articulation, sadly, for him, but we do have a up with the leg crashing into his chest, back with the leg basically all the way if you want, putting that back on the socket, and then in and out, and then side to side, swivel all the way. Same thing with this. You can do whatever you want with it, and it's a really nice piece. They're all well done, these Bionicle sets, and Akimu's no exception. I really like him a lot. He's a pivotal character in the storyline. Next up is Makuta. Makuta's mask of control looks really nice. I love this a lot. It's sort of like a ram in a way, and it's pretty neat. It has a lot of those hallmarks the mask of creation has, and it's really nice. I do like all these little runes on here. That's awesome. We have some four shells all throughout the body in purple that look great. We have the same pauldrons. We have some nice purple going down everywhere. This is the extent of the purple they made, I believe, but getting multiples of these pieces makes a great figure even better. This character wasn't even made, and I had to make him myself, but Makuta being such a pivotal character in the storyline, I think even more so than Ikimu, who was just reacting to Makuta's intentions and actions, had to be made. I'm very surprised about and Lego. Didn't really put him out. It's a shame. He looks wonderful and fantastic in this color scheme. It would have been great, but kit bashing him is the way to go for this, and he looks awesome anyways. Evil. He comes with the same exact shield, but for difference, I just made him a lefty. You know, I put it in the other hand. It works the same, same exact thing. Let's move on to the hammer though. Makuta's hammer is like it was in the animations, black with spikes on it. I think this does a good facsimile of what it was in those animations. It's pretty nice. I think this spike might be too big though, but it looks cool. And this spike might be a little too small, I guess, in relation, but it's fine for at least it has a function. You can twist the big spike on top to push out those little 
bullety doodads. It doesn't get fully to the bottom though, which is kind of a shame. You have to kind of reroute it, and this one scooches over a little bit. But for the sake of functionality, it works and it is a nice piece. I really love how the community came together and made their favorite villain if for Generation 2. It's really nice to see everyone just do their thing. And yeah, red pins are fine, get over it. Hammer swing functionality works about the same. It's even more hindered though, I think, on this. I may have actually changed it up a little bit. And also the mask works about the same, you just click and it tries to fall off as much as it may. Makuta is one to not let go of his masks. I also got to mention that this is a nice orange stalk that looks pretty cool on the figure and gives him an evil appearance with his eyes. As far as articulation goes for Makuta, the head kind of moves around a little bit fine. It does grind against these though, and the shoulders move into this and kind of crash into it. You can't really scooch them in all that much, and it's basically the same otherwise. These pieces could be threes, they'd be way better, but they're fours, so we have to deal with it. He looks great, and I'm not really complaining that much. I'm fine with it. Akimu stands at about six inches tall to the top of his mask, maybe five and a quarter inches to the top of his head. Makuta stands at about five and a quarter to five and a half inches tall or so. They're pretty tall for these kind of characters. And also here's Jesse Heck Creative. Mask of creation in one hand. Mask of control in the other. Master hand. Crazy hand! Hello everyone, and thank you so much for watching so far. Make sure to click like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. You can also click the bell icon for more creativity. Now let's get back to it. Let's take a look at the Skull Grinder Combiner. This is a combination model of Skull Scorpio and the Skull Grinder and Mask Maker set. I think it's pretty cool. I added a lot of gold around the whole body to just give it a little more gold appearance, more blue around the body to just sort of make that look a little bit better at least. I lengthened the arms a little bit. I added a lot of these little blue bits around the body as far as the little things over here with the wings and the little parts of the horns. Look eyes almost like headlights i do find this to be pretty cool it's a nice build it's really sturdy and well done it does look a little anemic though because you do lack that large staff he carries that has the bulk of his weight and power i believe but he looks really nice i think he's a really cool set with a lot of great attributes that i think i made a little bit better in this case you can build this model using just parts from those sets so if you want to build this guy pick those up He's cool. As far as accessories and functions go, at least, he comes with a skull staff that looks pretty neat. You can snap it open and shut a little bit. It's a little bit kind of unwieldy though. It doesn't really work as well as it could. It's fine, I would guess. I did add a lot of blue to it in this gold piece over here. I had to really sort of finagle how it worked. There is a missing little piece I could add something to. A little more blue studs over here. I had a shield too, just for the heck of it. You can actually swivel it a little bit and it does kind of work in a weird way. You may have to press it towards each other to get it to work better. It's just okay, I guess. I wanted to use a lot of the longer pieces in this to make this a little more better. I added this piece right over here that looks nice and taking it off is pretty easy. Just detach it from his hand right over there and then remove these pieces right over here and you can actually swivel his hand up and down if you want to have this little thing I guess and use it to beat someone or something like that but just be warned because it does get stuck in his horns and the pieces kind of move around a little bit sort of ungangly in a way these wings do move backwards and they can move forwards you can also twist this up and down for the bottom portion of the wings and use this to kind of steer them in a way back and forth interesting function i'm not really sure what it exactly would do in the character but i do find this to be a really nice looking set at least with those functions in mind they don't work as well as they could but they function Function, at least. As far as articulation goes, aside from those functions, yes, the wings can move. We've established that already. The head is on two different ball joints, one for the bottom, one for the top. He kind of cranes his neck a little bit. You can scoot that around any way you want, up and down, all the way around. Move his arm up and down, and then it goes back a little bit and forward a little bit. You do get a little bit of swivel over here, and you can kind of like, I don't know what you're doing to that arm, but I guess I just usually use it from the top ball up there. You do get up this far and down with some little bit of swivel. It kind of crashes into this piece right though, and it goes up and down, and then like so. It's a thicker piece, so you don't really get too much range out of it on the hand. As far as the legs go, they're really interestingly done. Uh, you can move them out this far, maybe even up a tiny bit, but they're kind of static as far as that goes. Going back, you can go back this far, forward, not really all that much. For the knee, it's weird. It's kind of digitigrade, digitigrade 
again you go back this far and forward not so much it crashes into this piece right over here you can go down and then that can eclipse into that and then up with the foot and you get some nice pivot and it works out pretty well it's a nicely articulated set. It's meant for, I think, just being imposing looking and cool rather than actually fighting anything. But it looks cool and neat and you do get toe articulation too. So that's a plus. It's a really cool set. I'm just proud that I made it this way. The Skull Grinder Combiner stands at about nine and a quarter inches tall, maybe nine and a half inches tall to the top of his head and around ten and a half inches tall to the top of his wings. He looks really imposing and big, especially next to Makuta and Jesse Heck Creative. You know what, Kultakai? I think that Bionicle is the true never-ending story, coming back from time to time to remind us of our childhoods. Overall, having these three sets is pivotal if you want to complete your Bionicle Generation 2 collection. Maskmaker Akimu is wonderfully done. I love the gold against the blue. It's really nice. I love how he's all translucent and wonderful. That hammer is amazing and has a great dual function. The gearbox isn't really that obtrusive, and it's great to have a smaller set with a gear function. It's super nice and really well done, especially that shield. Makuta is sort of a carbon reverse copy of Akimu, but their masks are super cool, and I love how they're done with all the runes on them. The gold and purple really melt well together and that hammer is wicked cool emphasis on the wicked skull grinder combiner aka cult akai looks awesome i love the look of that weapon it's great yes i'm shooting my own horn a little bit because i added some things to him but i think it brings out a lot of the colors in him the gold throughout the body is really cool the blue throughout the body clashes against the red really well all the darker colors really seep in and give you that evil vibe especially the eyes as well as those horns and the functions on him while not really used all that much still work well for the character and the figure. He has his mask stealing staffs and he steals masks after all, so that's his MO. He just wants more masks. Really wonderful set and I wish he was canon. It's a shame he's not, but I'm glad to do at least have these three in my collection. I definitely recommend picking them up and you can create anything you want out of them, especially since you have the mask of creation. Thank you so much for watching Jesse Heck Creative. Feel free to click like, subscribe, share, or leave a comment. You can also visit us at jesseheckcreative.com where you'll find more reviews like this one. Thanks again for watching and keep being creative. Stay tuned!